Hello and welcome to another Creature Caster assembly video. This is Emma and today we're going to be assembling the Mechanatrix of Tyranny. Alright, so as always make sure that you have all the parts in front of you and cut off all the sprues and clean up the parts before you start assembling. And we're going to start with the tail. So these three pieces here make the ends of the cables and wires and just make sure that they fit nicely on the sides and on the top because the bottom you can just shape away until it fits. So the order of assembly on this model is pretty important I would say. Uh, especially when you get to the tubes and the arms. If you're painting this model to a higher standard, you'll definitely need to do sub-assemblies, just especially in the upper region where there are lots of parts going over parts, her arms, her tubes, her weapons. The tips of these tubes are a quad, connection because it's three parts going on to a fourth so just keep in mind that you might need to shave away some of the excess material to make it fit snugly. If it's not fitting as snugly into those holes as you'd like then you can just shave away a bit of material. I think that the most important connection is the tail itself. You want that to look clean. Make sure you've got good glue coverage. I topped away a bit of the excess just because I need to take pictures of this for our website, but you want to be generous with your glue. This wire body gets to hold up a decent amount of weight. That being said, this did hold up her body. If you're going to be using her for gaming or anything that requires you to carry her around, make sure that she's quite secure. All right, and while that's drying, we're going to move on to her upper body. So we're test fitting first her horn backing and her uh, torso with her head. This is a multi-connection point, so it's very important to make sure that it fits nicely before you start committing with the glue. And it's looking good, so we're going to attach this here now. And I'm testing the torso once again to make sure that everything's looking good. We also want to test fit the top of her mech suit at this point to make sure that it's a clean fit with her torso and the back fit. And now we're going to attach her torso. And once this has dried a little bit, test fit these horns. These horns slide in behind her neck and into this kind of crevice. Well, they have a crevice that locks in place. Make sure that you test the head over as well. You kind of have to pull it forward a tiny bit so that it connects with the head. So when you're attaching these horns, I recommend lots of test fitting with the head, which you'll see as I go forward. So I'm gluing it in place on the neck, and I'm using the head to position it correctly where I want it. And again with the second horn, make sure that it's in the correct position with the head. The inner workings are all hidden, so it doesn't matter as much where they're hitting. You want to make sure that it's hitting her uh, jawline nicely. Like that. And these next 
horns kind of lock into the first set of horns. But if you're struggling to get that fit, you could just shave it off and fit it flat against it. There you go. Kind of have to just pop it in and then pull it forward a little bit. I don't know if you saw my maneuver there, but. And then with these third little horns, it's a bit difficult to fit it in with your fingers. I needed to use tweezers. If you have larger fingers, I would maybe recommend doing these before the second set of horns. It might be easier to get them to fit in there. There shouldn't be too much uh, conflict between the two parts. But if you do put on the little horns first, you'll probably have to shave off the little nub that locks into the place of the first horns on those second horns. If you have Instacare, this would definitely be a great time to use it. <laughs> And before we add her face, we're just going to test fit these last horns, make sure that they're fitting cleanly. And everything good. So we're going to add her face. And then add those last horns. These ones are pretty straightforward. <laughs> there we go. Horn's done. We're going to set her aside and let those dry and add these little wires and tubes to the bottom half. So this one has three connection points. As you'll see here, I put glue on only two of the connection points because I had a derp moment and then I had to put glue on the third connection point. I would recommend putting glue on all three before attaching. <laughs> and the next part goes on her left side. Again, these are pretty straightforward and you can even kind of adjust the angle if you want. Now that the face is done, we're going to test that top bit, the connection between the body and the face, and then attach her torso. And I'm just going to show you the one that I assembled for my tray show. I magnetized so that it's easier to travel with, but for this one I am not magnetizing. And I'm sure if you are watching this, you have pinned a model before, but in case you haven't, or in case you like to learn new methods, here's mine. <laughs> I'm just going to show you how I pinned one arm. I didn't put enough putty on the first time. There we go. The putty is nice because it shows you the angle that you need to drill at. And then I have just been using push pins to mark where I need to drill. And they've been proving quite handy. They also give you a good entry point for the drill. And then for the pin, I just use paper clips. And there we go. Her arm is going to have the support it needs. Now I'm going to test fit the spear. And for that spear tip, I did end up pinning it. I was struggling to hold it at the correct angle because I drank too much coffee before I made this video. <laughs> let's see how twitchy my fingers are. So let's set that aside and let it dry. And we're going to test fit the, the right arm. 
her right arm and then glue it. And now the left arm. This part is pretty straightforward. Just make sure that you're connecting them at the correct angle. I almost put her forearm upside down, which would have meant her spear would be upside down. So don't do that. <laughs> if you're gonna be traveling with her for the spear, you might wanna magnetize it or pin it. It's really the only part from her arms that is easily detachable because of all the tubes. And then we need to put on her humanoid arms at this point. And then for the rest of the video, I did not glue her to the base because it would be incredibly hard to film, but I would maybe recommend that just to add that stability while you're attaching the tubes. I would recommend first gluing the mech arms in place and then attaching the torso to the base and then doing the tubes. But for my left arm, I removed a little bit too much material from the socket so it wasn't fitting snugly and it was a bit loose. So I am testing with this tube to make sure that I get the right fit before I glue the arm in place. You can see it's kind of loose there. And then I figured out the angle. These tubes have pretty clear little connection points, but as I'm sure you've guessed, they are the most complex part of the model. I would say this tube is probably one of the easiest ones. This has a good stabilizing point right here on the elbow. So you could even put this tube on after the next tube. But definitely the first one that I put on needs to be put on first. That one slides right in under there and just on the outside of her shoulder, would you call it? Right there. <laughs> and now for the right arm. Again, I did a bit of test fits with the tubes. And with this right arm, I did end up needing to use a bit of heat for my tubes and wires, whatever you want to call them. They just weren't quite hitting the right spots. I used my hairdryer on the highest heat setting and pointed it at the tube until it got off and then just bent it to the correct place. Resin is nice like that. It can form new memory, new shape. All right, those tubes are done. So now I'm doing the part that I recommend you do before the tubes. <laughs> Again, I just did it this way so that I could film it easier. And then for her hip spikes, there's just no way I can film it. So 12 goes here and then it goes up to 17 over to her left side. And there we go. I stuck them all on off camera, but this is her in her full, complete glory. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, you can email us or contact us on Instagram, Facebook, etc. I hope you enjoy assembling this awesome and slightly challenging model.